Today we are going to be learning about velocity time graphs. VT graphs. Now on a velocity time graph, uh, what do you think is the dependent variable? What do you think is the independent variable? What is, which is the dependent? Time to time. No, or the independent, independent is time. time. There you go. Yeah, good job. So it's going to be a graph of your velocity, which will be your dependent variable. Which means, which axis do you find that on? Uh, y. Correct. Versus time, uh, which will be your independent variable. Alright, so, let's start today with a very simple example. Let's say, um, we'll go back to our very simple position time example where you guys have all seen this many times before. Looking at that data set, those numbers, what is the velocity of our object here? You can tell just by looking at it. Right? For every second, we're increasing our, uh, our displacement by one meter. So our velocity is one meter per second. Now, we looked and we explored what this looked like on a position time graph, which I am just going to draw a really uh, rudimentary version right now. But on a position time graph, what type of line would this be? Yeah, it's a straight line. In particular, what kind of line is it going to look like? Sorry? It's linear, straight, same thing. It's going to be uh, like this, right? It's going to be like that. That's what we learned last class. You probably drew a bunch of those on your labs, by the way. Remember I asked you for lines of best fit? And if you calculated your line of best fit on the lab, what does your slope represent on a position time graph? What does your slope represent? Your velocity, right? So if I found the slope of this line, it would have a slope of one meter per second, right? Which is our velocity. Now the question is, what would this look like if I plotted it on a velocity time graph? Right, so if I had a, instead a velocity time graph, right, if I had our velocity versus time here, uh, and we're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to say our velocity is in meters per second. What would this look like on a velocity time graph. Think about it. Somebody take a guess. What would that look like? Sorry, Amy? The same. The same? So do we think it's going to look like, like this? Does everyone agree? So you're shaking your head you're there, Benjamin. What, what do you think is the correct answer? Moreover, what do you think is wrong with this? What's this object doing? It is speeding up, right? It is speeding up. So if you look at this object here, it is in fact speeding up. How do I know that? Well, look, we are increasing in our velocity. That's not what we did here. What is my velocity? It's one meter per second. Is my velocity changing? Yeah. No. So what's that going to look like? Straight. Is it able to be a horizontal line? Yeah, there you go. 
It's a horizontal line right here. It's a horizontal line. What does a horizontal line tell us? On a position time graph, it's at rest. But on a velocity time graph, it's keeping its same velocity. So let's keep a little tally here of all the different lines we're drawing. So we're going to say that a um, horizontal line on a velocity time graph will be a constant velocity. And those of you that pointed out on a position time graph, it would be at rest. That is true, right? If you're not changing your position, you are not moving. But on a velocity time graph, it represents a constant velocity. Now let's use that same data set I used when describing um, accelerated motion on a position time graph. So 0, 1, uh, 4, 9, 16. Now would you say that this object is speeding up? Yeah. I would definitely say that. Right? If we look, the rate at which we are changing our position, um, oh, that's about how you say it. The, the amount of displacement change for every second is going up, right? Every second, we are changing our position by more and more and more, aka our velocity is increasing. So what would that line look like on a position time graph? What does that line look like on a position time graph if I plot it out? Yeah, you're right, right? It's going to be curved, right? If I plotted all these points out, we would see that my line is curved. What does that mean? If my line is becoming steeper, what is that telling us? Yeah? Yeah, my velocity is changing, we have an acceleration. In particular, am I speeding up or slowing down in this case? Speeding up. Clearly I'm speeding up, right? My slope is becoming steeper and slope <laughs> is velocity, therefore my velocity is increasing. Now, if I were to plot this on a velocity time graph, I don't expect you to be able to transfer this into velocity time data. That's a grade 11 skill. I'm going to tell you what that data is going to be. So here's time and our velocity. And this is going to be the exact same data um, from here. I'm just going to convert that into velocity versus time. So after one second, we are going two meters a second. After two seconds, we are going four. After three seconds, we are going six. And after four seconds, we are going eight. I definitely did not need to do this. So two, four, uh, six and eight. Now, if I were to plot this data, you had it right at me. What's this going to look like? Yeah, you're right. So, we put a point there. We put a point there. We will put a point there, and we will put a point up here. Now, you'll see that we get a straight line. We get a straight line. Now, looking at these numbers here, what is our acceleration? You can tell just by looking at the numbers. Yeah, excellent. Two meters per second squared. You can tell just by looking at it, right? For every second, we are increasing our, our velocity uh, by two meters per second. Let me ask you a different question. Let's say I wanted to find the slope of this line. How could I find the slope of that line? 
for all that. Someone help me out here. What's the slope formula? Yeah, it's the change in your rise over the change in your run. So if we were to explore that, our slope is equal to the change in my rise over the change in my run. So this is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And since this is a straight line here, does it matter which two points I pick? No, it doesn't, right? It doesn't matter. I can pick any two points on this line. I may be a little lazy here. I'm going to choose 0, 0, and I'm going to choose uh, 4 seconds, right? 8 and 4. So for my y values, I'm going to plug in 8 meters per second minus 0, and 4 seconds minus 0. And what is this equal to when you do the math? 8 divided by 4? 2. 2. And what are my units? Like 2 meters per second squared. 2 meters per second squared. Huh. Huh. Well, what was my acceleration that we determined just by looking at these numbers? 2 meters per second squared. Well, that's interesting. What is our rise for this graph? What is the unit of our rise? What are we looking at? What is our rise? Velocity. Velocity, thank you. It is velocity. So really, we are saying the change in our rise, the change in our velocity. What is our run? It is time. That's right, it is time. It's the change in our velocity over the change in time. And what formula is that? What formula is that? Yeah, you're right. What is it, Haley? Yeah, that's your acceleration. Right? So this is the formula for acceleration. So the slope on a velocity time graph is equal to what? Right, we said the slope on a position time graph is equal to your velocity. What is the slope on a position time graph equal to? Yeah, yeah you're right. It's, it's your acceleration. right? So your slope here is 2 meters per second squared, which is your acceleration of your object. Okay, This is your acceleration of your object. So that's a really big point. Just like the slope on a position time graph is your velocity, the slope on a velocity time graph is your acceleration. So make a big point to that. The slope on a velocity time graph is the object's acceleration. It is the object's acceleration. So going back now to our, our list of lines here, what can be said of a straight line? A horizontal line is constant velocity acceleration. With, with no acceleration. What is a straight line then? Acceleration. What kind of acceleration? Speeding up or slowing. Sure. But on a straight line, is your slope the same at all places, yes. at all points? Yes, it is. So what can you say about your acceleration? Excellent. That's the word I was looking for. Constant acceleration. If you have a straight line on a velocity time graph, you have a constant acceleration. And then lastly, what do you think a curved line would be? What do you think a curved line would be? Well, think 
about it. On a position time graph, what does a curved line tell you? You have a changing velocity, right? If your curved line looks like this, you are speeding up, right? You have a changing velocity because your slope is your velocity. So what do you think a curved line would represent on a velocity time graph? Not a changing velocity. Your velocity would be changing, obviously. But excellent. Your slope is acceleration. So if your slope is changing, your acceleration is changing. So a curved line would be a changing acceleration. Right? That'd be a changing acceleration. Uh, let's, just, let's explore a couple examples. Let's explore a couple examples. So if I wanted you to draw for me, let's say um, objects traveling fast, medium, and slow. So let's say I wanted you to draw for me three objects, one traveling at a fast constant velocity, one traveling at a medium constant velocity, and one traveling at a slow constant velocity. What would that look like? Well, let's draw a couple lines on here. Let's draw a couple horizontal lines, because I said constant velocity, and the only way you can have constant velocity is if your line's horizontal. All right, so we have lines here, uh, let's say A, B, and C. Of these three lines, which one is traveling the fastest? Does everyone agree? C? Now that makes perfect sense. Right? If I were to put some arbitrary numbers in here, 1, 2, 3, say negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, well, we are clearly increasing in magnitude. We are increasing the speed at which our object is traveling. So clearly, C is greater than B, which is greater than A. Now let's look in the opposite direction. Let's look in the negative direction. And let's draw some horizontal lines here. All right, so same thing. I'm going to label these A, B, and C. Which of these objects now is traveling the fastest? Depends. OK, interesting. If we look in the negative direction, gut instinct, which one's traveling the fastest here? Sabir? Think A's traveling the fastest? Does everyone agree? Oh, now we're a little confused, right? Because we're moving in the negative direction. Don't let the negative confuse you. That just represents a different direction. If I instead replaced negative and positive with, say, like, east and west, does that change your answer? The answer here is still C is greater than B is greater than A. For the same reason you said C, B, and A here. The closer you are to zero, clearly the slower you are going. Right? Don't be confused by positive and negative, negative in particular. Right? That just means you are traveling in the opposite direction. The further away from zero you are, in either direction, the faster you are going. Okay, the faster you are going. Let's explore a couple more examples. And by the way, this would be, uh, if you remember my position time graph I drew and I kind of did the same exercise with you guys, uh, right? If, if we looked at the you know, slow, medium, fast, it's a direct translation, right? Slow, medium, and fast. This is a direct translation uh, both ways here. 
Okay, so let's do another example. Let's say you had instead objects that were going like, let's say this. That's kind of a bad line. Imagine both those lines are straight, A and B here. What is A doing, object A right now? Excellent. You're speeding up in which direction? You're speeding up in the positive direction. What is object B doing? Good job. It is speeding up in which direction? The negative direction. If you are moving away from zero, you are speeding up. Okay, if you're moving away from zero, you are speeding up. Now, what would it look like instead if I was, say, slowing down? If I was slowing down, what kind of line should I draw? Should I draw a line that looks like this in the positive direction or looks like that? that. that. Looks like that? So we should be going towards zero, right? If we are slowing down, we're moving towards zero. So that's an object that is slowing down. And here is another object that is slowing down in the negative direction. Now something to note, all four of those lines I just drew, the speeding up in positive negative, slowing down positive negative, they were all straight lines. So what does that tell us in regards to our acceleration? Excellent. These are all representing constant acceleration. Now, before we do a super large example, um, there's one last thing I would like to show you, and that is changing directions. Now, if we were to look at a position time graph, uh, so here's a position time graph. Position versus time, here's our zero point. Um, let's say we had an object that did this. That did that. How would you describe this object's motion? You should all be position time masters by now. How would you describe this object's motion? It is not speeding up, yep. Um, how did it accelerate? So on a position time graph, your slope represents your, your velocity. Now, is my velocity here getting steeper or more horizontal? Is it getting steeper or more horizontal? More horizontal. If you have a completely horizontal line on a position time graph, what does that tell you? You're at rest, right? So for this first little bit here, I'm slowing down. And then what happens at that point right there? That little point I marked, what happens? I change directions, and then I start to speed up in the negative direction. Right on a position time graph, that little point right there that I've marked, that is where you change directions. Right? There's going to be a point there where your slope goes from positive to negative. Right? That is how you represent a change of directions on a position time graph. Now, if we looked at a velocity time graph, uh, by the way, this is where I catch a lot of students because they struggle with going between the two. So if we had a velocity time graph, what does a change of directions look like on a velocity time graph? If I were to transpose this displacement time graph onto my velocity time graph, what would that look like? Well, I'm going to tell you right now that this is a constant negative acceleration. So this object is undergoing a constant negative acceleration. So if it's a constant acceleration, what kind of line am I going to be drawing? Straight. Excellent. 
I'm going to be drawing a straight line on my velocity time graph. So, I would say that my object on a velocity time graph looks something like that. I didn't really draw that. Yeah, I can draw that a little bit better here. Let's draw that a little better. Let's say it looks like this. So on a velocity time graph, where does my object change positions? Where does it change positions? Uh, where does it change directions? Sorry, it's not positions. Where does my object change directions? Think about it. When did my object change directions on my position time graph? What happened to my slope? It went from positive to negative. To negative. What does my slope represent? It represents my velocity. So it's where we went from positive velocity to negative velocity. So where here did we go from positive velocity to negative velocity? Severe? Zero. Yeah, excellent. Right? We change directions right there on zero. We change directions right there. So on a velocity time graph, this is where you change directions. And that makes perfect sense, right? If I am changing directions, I need to slow down to a stop for a brief instant. Right? No matter what, at some point you're going to have zero velocity as you transfer and change directions. And then I started to speed up in the negative direction. So if this here was my zero points, right? I'll say this is positive. I'm going to be slowing down in the positive direction, changing directions, and then accelerating in the negative. So it's going to look like I'm moving fast and slowing down, change directions, and then I speed up in the negative direction. Right? So zero is where you change directions. Let's write that down. On a velocity time graph, an object changes direction. as it um, passes zero. Changes direction as it passes zero. All right, we're going to do one more example, um, and then we are going to be done for today. So, same thing, a velocity time graph. Uh, this is my positive and negative velocity. And let's look at a slightly more complex example.
Sure, that looks wacky. Let's do it. All right, so we have um, A to B to C to D to E, F, G, H, uh, let's see, I, J, and K. Whew, quite the alphabet I've written on the board there. So what I want you to do at every single one of these points is I want you to describe this object's motion. So describe its acceleration, describe its velocity over each section. So I'm going to get you started here. Someone help me out. From A to B, what is our object doing? Uh, no. Excellent. You would be right if that was a position time graph. Uh, but it's a velocity time graph. So on a velocity time graph, a straight line tells you a constant velocity. And if I were to plug some uh, constant acceleration, if I was to plug in some arbitrary numbers in here, say positive 5 and negative 5, well, we're moving away from 0. So what is our object doing? Speeding up. We're speeding up, right? So this has a uh, constant positive acceleration, a constant positive acceleration, and my velocity is also positive. Right? It's really easy to see my velocity is positive. Anything above the line is positive. Anything below the line is negative. So I want you to take some time right now. Uh, do your best and try to figure out what's happening uh, between each of my segments. Um, so let's go over this now. Let's go over all these points. What's happening from B to C? I heard constant. Constant what? Constant velocity. Here we have a constant positive velocity. And what is our acceleration? Zilch, because it's constant velocity, right? What's happening from C to D? Let's hear from somebody else. Let's pick on uh, Ismail. What's happening from C to D? Someone help me. Uh, what's happening for CD? It's Sorry? Velocity time over. Sorry? It's a velocity time over. Yeah. So it would go constant <laughs> negative acceleration. Perfect. Well done. So this is going to be constant negative acceleration. And is our velocity here positive or negative? What part of the graph is it in? Is it in the positive section or the negative section? It's positive, right? It's positive. So we have a positive uh, velocity. Positive velocity. Right? When your signs don't match, that tells you that you are slowing down. Right? We're approaching zero. That makes perfect sense. We are slowing down. What's happening from D to E? Yeah, we have a constant velocity, but what is our velocity from D to E? Zero. Not, yeah, zero. There you go. Um, so we are at rest. We are not moving. If we have no velocity, we have no change in our displacement. We're not moving at all. We're at rest. What's happening from E to F? Yep, constant negative acceleration. I was here from somebody else. Let's uh, um, Niash, what do you think? What is my velocity for e, to f? for e to f? Is it negative or positive? Are we speeding up or slowing down? Yeah, we're speeding up. So 
for speeding up, our velocity and our acceleration must be in the same direction. And it makes sense. Look, we're in the negative velocity zone here, right? So clearly our velocity is negative. We are speeding up. We are moving away from zero. What about f to g? What's happening? We are slowing down. Constant positive acceleration. If you look, our slope has gone from negative to positive. What is our slope on a velocity time graph equal to? It's our acceleration. So our acceleration has changed from being constant negative to constant positive acceleration. What is our velocity? It's not positive. What is it? Negative. It's going to be negative. It's still negative, right? We still are traveling in the negative direction. We are just slowing down. We are just slowing down. What's happening from G to H? Let's hear from, uh, let's hear from Michael. What's happening from G to H? We have a curved line now, right? What did, uh, what did a curved line represent on a position time graph? A change in velocity. It represented an acceleration. Well, here our slope isn't velocity. It's acceleration. So if we have a curved line on a velocity time graph, what does that tell us? We have an ex excellent. We have a changing acceleration. Now here, is our acceleration positive or negative? positive, right? It's going that way, so it's positive. So we have a uh, changing, actually let's get more specific. Is our acceleration increasing or decreasing? Mm. Is our acceleration, is our slope getting steeper or is it getting more horizontal? More horizontal. Right, more horizontal. If we approach, uh, approach completely horizontal, that means no acceleration. So is our acceleration increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. It is decreasing. So this would be a decreasing positive acceleration. And we still have a positive velocity here. I shouldn't say still. We have a positive velocity, right? Because we are now traveling in the positive direction. By the way, which points here do we change directions? When we go past zero. When we go past zero. So we change directions here, and we change directions here. And here. What is happening from H to I? Increase negative. Oh, excellent. This is an increasing negative. Our slope is becoming steeper in the negative direction. So we have an increasing negative acceleration. And what is our velocity here? Are we slowing down or speeding up? Are we slowing down or speeding up? Pause. We're slowing down. How do I know we're slowing down? Because what are we approaching? Zero. Every time we're moving towards zero, we are slowing down. So this is a positive velocity. We are, in fact, slowing down. What's happening from I to J? Is it increasing or decreasing? It's a decreasing what? You're right, it is decreasing, right? Our slope is becoming more horizontal. Negative. Nailed it. Decreasing negative acceleration. And now are we speeding up or slowing down? We are moving away from zero, so we are speeding up in the negative direction. Uh, we have a negative velocity. Whew. Sorry, I made too many points on here. Last one, J to K. What's happening here? Increasing. What's increasing? Excellent. We have an increasing positive acceleration, right? Our slope is getting steeper. Our acceleration is increasing.
Um, and what is our velocity here? Are we slowing down or speeding up? We're slowing down, we're approaching zero, and our velocity is negative, right? It's going to be the opposite direction to our acceleration. 